Και κύριοι, μείνετε μαζί μα για να δούμε. Πολεμικό πυρετό στην Ασία. Αντιμέτωπε οι δύο πυρηνικέ υπερδυνάμει, Ινδία και Πακιστάν, με φόντο τα χιονισμένα Ιμαλάια. Ακόμη, πώ και αγραφεί η Χίλαρη Κλίντον τι πολιτικέ τη φιλοδοξίε, τι λέει για τι σχέσει τη με τον Πλανητάρχη και τι για τη Μόνη Καλεβίνσκι. Στην Ήπειρο περιοδεύει ο Οικουμενικό Πατριάρχη Βαρθολομαίο. Ο προκαθήμενο τη Ορθοδοξία έτυχε θερμότατη υποδοχή από του κατοίκου τη Πρέβεζα, των Ιωαννίνων αλλά και όλη τη περιοχή που είχαν βγει για να προπαντήσουν την πομπή του Πατριάρχη. Κρατώντα πέντε λευκά γαρίφαλα και ευλογώντα του πιστού που είχαν σειρεύσει στο αεροδρόμιο, έφτασε σε 9 το πρωί ο Οικουμενικό Πατριάρχη στον ομό Ετόλο Ακαρνανία. Η πόλη που χρησιμοποιούσε ω ορμητήριο ο Κοσμά ο Ετολό ήταν ο επόμενο σταθμό του Οικουμενικού Πατριάρχη. Του γάμου τη στη δημοφιλή εκπομπή του Dan Rather στο κανάλι CBS, η κυρία Κλίντον υποστήριξε το σύζυγό τη. <laughs> Η κυρία Κλίντον ελπίζει πως το θρίλερ της παραπομπής εξαιτίας του σκανδάλου Λεβίνσκι είναι περασμένο, αν όχι ξεχασμένο. That we survived that painful period, uh, and it was painful. It was painful, obviously, for me and for my family and for our country. Και φυσικά οι φιλοδοξίες για την έδρα της Νέας Υόρκης στη Γερουσία παραμένουν. Κατά δημόσια απέτηση, όπως λέει η κυρία Κλίντον, ακόμη το σκέφτομαι, ομολογεί. Κυρίες και κύριοι γεια σας. Σε αυτόν εδώ τον τοίχο είναι γραμμένα τα θύματα του πολέμου του Βιετνάμ. Οι Αμερικανοί έχασαν περίπου 50.000 στρατιώτε στον πόλεμο. Οι Βιετναμέζοι ένα εκατομμύριο, αλλά αυτό είναι μια άλλη ιστορία. Στον πρόσφατο πόλεμο του Περσικού το 1991, οι Αμερικανικέ απώλειε ήταν πολύ λιγότερε. Οι Αμερικανοί έχασαν περίπου 79 άτομα, τα περισσότερα σκοτώθηκαν σε αυτοκινητιστικά ατυχήματα. Στον κόλπο. Οι Βρετανοί έχασαν επίση πολύ λίγου στρατιώτε, γύρω στα 17-18 άτομα. Οι περισσότεροι πάλι σε αντιχήματα. Στην πραγματικότητα όμω, ο αριθμό των θυμάτων του πολέμου στο Αμερικανικό στρατόπεδο αλλά και στο Βρετανικό στρατόπεδο είναι πολύ μεγαλύτερο. Περίπου 80.000 βετεράνοι του πολέμου του Περσικού υποφέρουν σήμερα από ένα περίεργο σύνδρομο, μια περίεργη αρρώστια. Ονομάστηκε το Σύνδρομο του Κόλπου. Το Σύνδρομο του Κόλπου οφείλεται κυρίω στη χρησιμοποίηση ραδινεργού ουρανίου, μια ουσία που χρησιμοποιήθηκε στα όπλα στον πόλεμο του Κόλπου. Πολλοί μολύθηκαν και πολλοί στρατιώτε πέθαναν. Ο πληθυσμό του Ιράκ επίση υποφέρει πολύ από το σύνδρομο του κόλπου. Τα ίδια όπλα χρησιμοποιούνται σήμερα στον πόλεμο τη Ιουγκοσλαβία. Το σύνδρομο του κόλπου, το σύνδρομο τη Ιουγκοσλαβία. Ανακαλύψαμε νέα στοιχεία και σα τα παρουσιάζουμε σήμερα. Για τα Αμερικανικά, Βρετανικά και συμμαχικά στρατεύματα, η εφορία από την νίκη στον πόλεμο του Κόλπου δεν κράτησε πολύ. Λίγο καιρό μετά την επιστροφή του στην πατρίδα, ο Ασάφ Ντουράκοβιτ, καθηγητή πυρηνική ιατρική στο Πανεπιστήμιο Georgetown στην Ουάσιγκτον, κλήθηκε να εξετάσει μερικού στρατιώτε με περίεργα συμπτώματα. In the month of August and September of 1991, several patients were referred to my clinic from New Jersey. Because doctors in New Jersey did not understand their symptoms, I examined 24 of the patients who were the members of 144th National Guard Transportation Unit, and I found that they had symptoms of depressed immune system. They had the symptoms of kidney malfunction, including hematuria, albuminuria, renal stones, 
and changes of morphology of the kidneys. Την ίδια εποχή και άλλοι Αμερικανοί στρατιώτες που είχαν υπηρετήσει τον Περσικό παραπονέθηκαν για την υγεία τους. Συνέστησαν μια οργάνωση βετεράνων που σήμερα στεγάζεται στο ίδιο κτίριο με τους βετεράνους του Βιετνάμ. Πρόεδρος των βετεράνων του κόλπου είναι ο Πολ Σάλιβαν. At first, the government completely denied that any veterans of the Gulf War were ill. Furthermore, the U.S. government also denied that any American service members may have been exposed to anything harmful. However, as time went on, more and more Gulf War veterans became ill. In 1994, the number was about 30,000. Right now, in 1999, the number is more than 110,000 out of 700,000 U.S. troops who were there in 1990 and 1991. How many pills do you have today? I would think when I'm really, really bad, over 20 a day, over 20 tablets a day. On average, about 12 a day, but when I'm quite poorly, um, when I have multiple health problems, and it can be about 20 type problems, there's to help me sleep. These are for, like asthma, for back, for a tight chest. These are for, these are antibiotics, strong antibiotics, for recurring infections because my immune system doesn't work properly anymore. And we have over 2,000 members um, that are registered with us, and they, they they're from all three services, from the RAF, from the Army, and from the Navy. And all the common, um, common factors are is that we've all got serious illnesses. We've all got the chronic fatigue and the irritable bowel and the heavy sweats. Ανάμεσα στους Βρετανούς βετεράνους που ήρθαν στη συνάντηση ήταν και ο Mike Barrows. Um, but my family had noticed a change in me. I had noticed a change in myself with my personality and that my health wasn't what it was before I went away. I mean, I was a fit um, paratrooper and medic. Now that I wasn't be able to, to be as fit as I was, I wasn't doing any running. Um, I was feeling fatigued all the time, tired. I was nauseous. Again, I was having stomach cramps. I was having the personality changes. I'd start crying a lot. I was having nightmares. I was becoming violent towards people. Um, I just couldn't cope with situations. It progressively got worse. I wasn't getting any better and my health was getting worse and worse and the army medically discharged me in 1995 with post-traumatic stress and, and depression and chronic fatigue. Um, it wasn't until I went to the, to the National Health Hospitals in, in, here in England that when they told me that, that they, they thought I had Gulf War Syndrome. In this very strange situation, I gave a name, the Syndrome of the Colp. But no one could not be able to recognize the symptoms. Τα περιστατικά πολλαπλασιάζονταν και η κατάσταση των ασθενών χειροτέρευε συνεχώς. Cancers, birth defects, immune deficiencies, neurological disorders including Lou Gehrig's disease. So the number of veterans sick has grown and the seriousness of their illnesses has also become more severe. Over the first three years we had a tremendous amount of reaming. The Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineers died. Now, they were the lab cancers. Now, um, that's not normal. These were fit young men, and we've got a, an unusual amount of, of, of these young men dying. The initial reports came back from the American CDC, that's the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta. They found at the CDC that Gulf War veterans are between four and 16 times more likely to be ill than civilians. Now I want you to think about that for a minute. The soldiers are the healthiest people in the population, carefully screened to be in the best physical condition. That was the documented evidence that we needed to show the veterans were sick. Their attitude has been one of denial uh, and one of, of cover-up and um, blaming our illness on to post-traumatic stress. Um, some of us may have, have, have an element of post-traumatic stress, but it doesn't cause the health problems that we're having. For instance, I also have a, um, a damaged left kidney, and I've now been told I've got osteoporosis in my spine, hips and feet. Um, you don't get that from post-traumatic stress. 
and at the age of just being just 40, something has, I've been exposed to something very toxic. Ο καθηγητής Ντουράκοβιτς, που συνέχιζε να εξετάζει τους 24 ασθενείς του, ανακάλυψε ότι είχαν κάτι κοινό. So I analyzed the history of their exposure in the Gulf and I found out amazing fact that they were involved in the cleaning up of the tanks that were disabled by radioactive ammunition. And they were working in the radioactive environment for six to eight months with no protection, no masks, no gloves, no protecting suits, but most of all, they did not have any detecting equipment to see how much radiation they are exposed to. Today's battlefield is a complex mixture of air power and land power. New technology has resulted in faster, deadlier weapon systems and the use of depleted uranium munitions and armor. Στον πόλεμο του κόλπου, οι Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες είχαν χρησιμοποιήσει για πρώτη φορά βόμβες και οβίδες με περίβλημα από εξασθενημένο ουράνιο. Τα νέα αυτά όπλα ήταν πολύ αποτελεσματικά. As we crested the rise, my gunner identified tanks to our direct front. He said, identified tanks. I yelled, fire. As I was yelling, fire on the intercom, the gun erupted. The round impacted on the frontal slope of the tank, and the tank commander was ejected out of the hatch, and he himself was, was in flames. As the other tanks crested the rise, they began to select their targets and engage in an almost simultaneous manner. So 15 seconds before, there was a cohesive or coherent Iraqi defense. 15 seconds later, that defense was completely in flames. When we look back over the armored vehicles, you think, you think, my God, you know, I, this is what an armored cavalry troop in the assault can accomplish in that short amount of time. And as someone uh, who was on the battlefield in Iraq, I can say that, yes, the munitions fired by our tanks worked exceptionally well in the Gulf War. You know that American Coca-Cola cans are made out of aluminum, right? It's the equivalent of shooting a steel bullet at an aluminum can. The steel bullet will go right through it because aluminum is very thin, it's, it's not very dense, it's very pliable. So wouldn't you, if you were a commander on the battlefield, want a weapon that would turn the other guy's tanks into Coke cans? We got the word that there was an Iraqi counterattack. As we arrive out there, we saw horizon to horizon Iraqi tanks, armored vehicles. And as we started hitting these tanks and things started happening in our favor, uh, the attack basically just ground to a halt. Uh, all the tanks stopped, the armored vehicles stopped, the hatches flew open. The uh, Iraqis started bailing out of the tanks and, uh, you know, scrambling around in the desert trying to figure out what was going on. It was like, you know, something out of a, you know, spaghetti western with a tripwire and the horses falling. It was, uh, you know, as you engage these, these uh, troops with 20 millimeter, uh, it was the first time I'd ever done that. And they just kind of pitch over in the desert. Flying over the oil wells, it was like something out of Dante's Inferno thick black oil field smoke, a littered battlefield burning tanks, aircraft flying around, very surrealistic and you almost had to slap yourself in reality to go out there and do your mission. Depleted uranium is obtained from uranium ore which is found throughout the world. In the United States, this ore is mined in New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and Arizona. Depleted uranium is cheap, plentiful, and easy to machine into various products. Ένα άλλο προσόν του εξασθενημένου ουρανίου είναι ότι είναι δωρεάν. Είναι στην πραγματικότητα απόβλητο των πυρηνικών εργοστασίων. The stockpiles of the waste depleted uranium are thousands and thousands and thousands of tons. It is radioactive waste that is present in every of 111 nuclear reactors in the United States of America. 
and of other nuclear countries as well. This uranium is radioactive garbage. No country of the world wants to accept it, to bury it. Colorado refused it, New Mexico refused it, Arizona refused it, Utah refused it. Government tried to buy the old mines that are not used anymore to deposit that radioactive waste, and the governors of each one of those states said, we do not want to contaminate our population with depleted uranium. We know of, of the story of the phantom ship that is constantly in the sea between the United States and the Mexico, because the uh, Mexican government was paid by the United States to bury that uranium somewhere in Mexico, but the Mexican government again disagreed with it, so the phantom ship is floating somewhere in the sea because nobody wants it. No harbor in the U.S. or Mexico wants that ship. Now, what to do with that uranium? It is millions of tons. Genius idea is to make the weapons out of it. Weapons and ammunition is superior. Uranium is better than any other metal in the history. It is very dense and it goes through the steel like the knife goes through the butter. We know it. But side effect is radioactivity. The National Gulf War Resource Center spent a year with reporters and veterans and their families for this article to come out regarding high increases in birth defects among Gulf War veteran children. Tiny victims of Desert Storm, children born with no arms, no legs. Truly, truly tragic stories. From the practical viewpoint, I have no evidence to it. But from the theoretical viewpoint, there is plenty of evidence that depleted, depleted uranium causes somatic and genetic uh, changes. So it is uh, very well known that genetic alterations in the organism that is internally contaminated with depleted uranium can be passed to the generations. Daryl Clark has had chronic respiratory problems ever since the war, along with hundreds of other soldiers complaining about desert storm illnesses. He suspects his problems come from exposure to DU dust. But his symptoms are not what bother Clark and his wife Sheena the most. This is their daughter Kennedy. She was born in September 1992, with purple welts called hemangioma covering not only her face and body, but some internal organs as well. Kennedy has serious problems breathing and was also born without a thyroid, an organ particularly sensitive to radiation. Army doctors told the Clarks Kennedy's problems can't be linked to her father's exposure to DU. That we have children, we have veterans have children with deformities, with, with extra toes and extra fingers and deformed legs. We have them, and that is a fact. And we don't know what the long-term effects are. If those children's children are going to have problems. Depleted uranium has two important physical properties. One, it is pyrophoric. This means that depleted uranium can ignite upon impact with armor or other hard materials, making it an ideal kinetic energy penetrator. Two, depleted uranium is about 1.6 times as heavy as lead. This high density means depleted uranium is an excellent armor plating because very few materials can penetrate it. Depleted uranium is used as armor in the Abrams M1 series tanks and as 105 millimeter and 120 millimeter kinetic energy penetrators or M60 and M1 tanks. Depleted uranium is used in 25 millimeter rounds for Bradleys and 20 millimeter and 30 millimeter rounds for aircraft. When depleted uranium round hits the metal like steel of the tank, by the virtue of pyrogenicity or pyrophoric capacity of uranium, thousands of degrees of centigrade temperature is produced and uranium is dispersed in the air. In the case of depleted uranium, particles are small enough to pass trachea and bronchi and microbronchi and get to alveoli. Once it's in the lungs, then it may enter the bloodstream, settle in the brain, settle in the liver, kidney. And again, as I mentioned before, depleted uranium is showing up in the reproductive tract of men. It's showing up in the semen of Gulf War veterans seven years, eight years since the start of the war. I can restrict myself only to the statement that on the basis of analysis of the urine samples of my patients, I can 
make definitive statement that they do contain depleted uranium eight years after the Gulf War. Well, things don't add up, and, and it wasn't until we started investigating into what was happening, and we looked at every single issue, the, the, the National Growth Veterans and Families, we, we, we tried to find out from the Ministry of Defence um, what was wrong with us. When we started to ask about depleted uranium, they got very irritable with us, very annoyed that we were asking about it. You didn't know anything about uh, depleted uranium before. So, How come you sort of thought that this is, might be of a depleted uranium? Well, things weren't adding up. What the MOD was saying about our illness and, and the fact that Gulf War veterans were dying of cancers, multiple cancers, and it was predominantly the lads who went back in after the war to bring the vehicles back. And they were climbing in and out, out of the vehicles that had been shot with depleted uranium. And it was those, that, those veterans that sadly died very quickly, the, the lads from the Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineers. They, they died um, terribly, of terrible deaths. Over 400 British veterans have died. Two of my patients died of cancer of the lung. Both of them were non-smokers. Both of them were relatively young. How old were they? Uh, one of them was 37. And the other, I could not find any information because it was hidden from me. I cannot get access to his records. I cannot get access to his body because I wanted to do, to do post-mortem analysis to take tissue samples. Uh, it was totally forbidden to come close to his records, and the family was instructed not to communicate. Pa two patients died, one in 1994 and the other one in 1995. But those patients are lucky because they are at rest now. I'm talking about people who were not lucky enough to be dead yet. I'm talking about people who are dying, who are confined to the wheelchairs, who are sick, who are out of job and who have no health protection of anyone. Well, my illnesses have progressively um, become worse. Um, I suffer from chronic fatigue, um, severe pain in all of my muscles and joints. Without the aid of medication, I have uncontrollable diarrhea and also I pass water very frequently, again, without the aid of medication to control it. My memory is is terrible. There's lots of information there, but I just can't bring it to the front when I need it. I didn't think for one minute that depleted uranium would have affected me because I worked with a surgical team and remained in Saudi Arabia throughout the war and never once went on the battlefield. But the test results came back positive which showed um, what I would describe in layman's terms as that I've been exposed to over 100 times the safe limit of uranium-238. O Ray Bristow υπηρετούσε στο υγειονομικό. Όπως και οι περισσότεροι ασθενείς, είχε προσληθεί χωρίς να δραματιστεί ή να βρεθεί σε μάχη. And this is from handling contaminated casualties or that it was... Um, airborne and it was in the atmosphere. What, what happened in my own case that, that I believe and the, the, and the servicemen from my unit, six of us have been tested from my unit and all six of us have tested positive. We received casualties in straight from the battlefield that came in by helicopter and they were covered in all the dust and debris from the battlefield. And, in, and instead of the, their clothing and equipment cut off before they came into us, they came in covered and we were working in a tented environment. So as I cut the equipment off them and all the dust came into the air. This is when I was breathing in it, breathing in unknowingly. Police radiotes molithican metà do telos ton ekthropraxion. Ihan bi sta katastramena irakina armata για να πάρουν ενθύμια. We want to make it very clear the soldiers did not know. As a result, the soldiers climbed upon lots of destroyed Iraqi vehicles. People who took the souvenirs they definitely were contaminated. How much of contamination we'll never know. Or Charles Sihan Miles προσβλήθηκε και αυτός χωρίς να ξέρει τους κινδύνους που αντιμετώπιζε. I was in uh, a tank, uh, in one tank in the Gulf, and we lost a tank in my company. It was hit by friendly fire, and uh, myself and my platoon sergeant we climbed up on that that damaged tank and pulled the crew out and pulled them back to safety. Um, what we didn't know at the time was that it had been hit by depleted uranium rounds. So. I, I did have uh, 
uh, skin cancer on my uh, melanoma. Uh, at one point, had had that surgically removed, and that's been monitored in the time since. At least five to ten percent of the people who I served with came back sick. The tanks που είχαν χτυπηθεί από φιλικά πυρά, δηλαδή κατά λάθο, μεταφέρθηκαν στη Σαουδική Αραβία για να επισκευαστούν. All tanks that were brought for the burial to the desert of Saudi Arabia were disabled by the friendly fire. Remember, we are not talking about Iraqi tanks here. Iraqi tanks could have been tens of times more radioactive than tanks of the alliance uh, uh, of the Great Britain, United States, France, and so on. It was United States and British tanks. Το Πεντάγωνο δεν μπορεί να επικαλεστεί έστω και εγκληματική άγνοια. Οι ειδικοί και η ηγεσία του στρατού ήξεραν πριν από τον πόλεμο του κόλπου ότι η χρήση εξασθενημένου ουρανίου είναι ιδιαίτερα επικίνδυνη. Μετά το τέλος του πολέμου, την ώρα που οι μηχανικοί επισκέβαζαν τα ΤΑΚΣ, μια ειδική ομάδα, καλά πληροφορημένη, έφτασε για επιθεώρηση. In the month of June 1991, A team from Pentagon was sent to Persian Gulf, to that King Khalid uh, base, and to the desert where they were burying the tanks. And that team from Pentagon stayed there for three days. But they were covered like astronauts. They had no part of the body exposed to the dust. They had uh, uh, eye goggles, they had gas masks, they had the gloves, they had boots, and they had dosimeters. And they stayed there for three days. In three days' time, they discovered that there is high radiation at the site of burial of the tanks. In one year of exposure to radioactivity, any worker in the nuclear industry or radioactive environment is allowed to receive five rems, which is 5,000 millirems for one year. That is maximum permissible dose, MPD. In the Gulf, they received annual dose in five hours of living there. Now, they were sleeping there, they were eating there, they were drinking water there, they did not have facilities to wash. They would have their sandwich with their dirty hands, ingesting radioactive dust with uranium on it. Even after detection of high radioactivity, they were still not provided with a basic protection. The soldiers of the United States and the soldiers of the United States had been used for a while in history as a pyramid. Mentionable. Hey! for our American military to refuse to study the health implications of depleted uranium. The National Gulf War Resource Center asked specifically in writing, will the government do more studies on depleted uranium? The response, no. Well, yes, and the papers that we were uncovering and, and the questions that we were asking, we were getting lied to by the Ministry of Defense. And um, when, once they started lying to us, then we knew there was something in this, this subject. And this is when that we, we decided to use our charity funds to get our tests done, because we initially asked the Ministry of Defence to test us, which they, they said there was no need to, because de depleted uranium was not an issue. I've been tested um, for depleted uranium through a urine sample, and the test came back positive. Um, the doctor who's uh, running these tests um, he's adamant and is 100% positive that uh, we have been contaminated with depleted uranium poisoning. Um, but as yet, there's no form of treatment. Μετά από πολλές πιέσεις, το Αμερικανικό Πεντάγωνο έφτιαξε το 1995 ένα βίντεο με οδηγίες για τους Αμερικανούς στρατιώτες. If you or your soldiers are injured in a depleted uranium contaminated situation, follow these steps. One. Use a radiac meter to check each wound for radiological contamination. Two, wash out all minor cuts on hands, arms, or legs to remove any radioactive or heavy metal contamination. Three, contact the medics. Αλλά οι στρατιώτες πολλών χρόνων που έχουν αγοράσει όπλα με εξεστηνημένο ουράνιο δεν έχουν ιδέα για τους κινδύνους που διατρέχουν. 
Άλλωστε, το Πεντάγωνο υποστηρίζει, ακόμη και σήμερα, ότι δεν είναι επικίνδυνο. Remember, depleted uranium is not an immediate health concern. Pentagon can deny as much as they want about the effects of alpha emitters. Veterans administration can deny as much as we want. But every student of physics in the high school knows the harmful effect of alpha radiation. About a year ago, a team from Bethesda, Maryland, here in Washington, D.C. area, did the work on depleted uranium in the bodies of the rats. They embedded the particles of depleted uranium that are similar to the fragments that soldiers encountered in the Gulf War. So the rats had a pellet under their skin just to simulate conditions of the Persian Gulf. And those scientists in Bethesda, it was published in the scientific literature, they discovered that uh, incidents of oncogenes, which are precursors of the malignancy in the rat, are several times increased in the rat that has embedded uranium particles, comparing with controlled rats. And I met uh, Iraqi veterans too, who were suffering exactly the same problems as myself and my colleagues. Some uh, much worse than me, uh, some are not as bad as me, but what is sure is we're all steadily going down downhill um, at different rates. Um, and the, the Iraqi veterans are presenting with all the same signs and symptoms. Several years ago, the study was published about cancer incidence in the human population of Ohio in the vicinity of depleted uranium processing facility. And analysis of 20 years of the health records and the mortality records indicated that death of the cancer of the lungs in the population in the vicinity of depleted uranium facility is several times higher than in the controlled population that is not close to such facilities. Χρησιμοποιώντας όλα τα μέσα, οι Αμερικανικές και Βρετανικές αρχές προσπάθησαν να σταματήσουν τις έρευνες. Ο καθηγητής Ντουράκοβιτς το κατάλαβε πολύ σύντομα. As soon as I started treating those patients, I kept receiving telephone calls from all over the country from Pentagon, from the Office of the Surgeon General, from the Veterans Administration headquarters, asking me to stop my work. And I was asking them on the telephone, why would you want me to stop my work? I'm a doctor. I'm a medical doctor. I have responsibility for the health and the life of my patients. So I told them I will continue my work. Every conceivable difficulty that you can imagine was put on my path. I was denied access to my computer, I was denied access to the secretary. I know in the United States a lot of the veterans have been threatened. Um, some of my friends and colleagues have uh, been approached um, by one of our British agencies um, about what information they do have on depleted uranium and uh, other aspects of Gulf War illness. I was um, in um, Iraq, uh, the police um, uh, raided my house and took away my computer. There was a database of documents held, uh, seven documents actually related to depleted uranium. One of my colleagues was uh, um, approached whilst in a small cafe next to the medical assessment programme in London and he was questioned who he was by two men, in, two large men in two dark grey suits. Um, who he was, why he was there and did, did he realise the problems he was causing and he said, he told him who he was, and yes, he said, yes, I am fully aware of the problems I'm causing. We do believe that our phones have been tapped and that uh, the Ministry of Defence and other British agencies are listening to our conversations, uh, trying to find out what we do know and what evidence that we do have. Παρά την αντίδραση του Πενταγόνου και του τμήματο των Βετεράνων, ο Ντουράκοβιτ συνέχισε τι έρευνέ του. Τότε άρχισαν να συμβαίνουν ακόμη πιο περίεργα περιστατικά. In the year 1991, when the patients were referred to my clinic in Wilmington, first thing I did is I sent them to the general medical examination, to the chest x-rays, uh, uh, blood function tests, cardiovascular system. After general examination of those patients, I took their urine samples, again in that uranium registry clinic, 
and sent it to the uh, United States Army Radiochemical Lab in Aberdeen, Maryland. Samples disappeared. If I treated my patients in 1991, many of them would be healthy and less sick today. But I was not allowed to treat them because urines disappeared. Three months ago, I was on the BBC and, and they came here to interview me, Dr. Uh, sorry, Mr. John McIntyre. And um, his team came to interview us and we provided him with a lot of relevant information. And he ran with a three minute story. And when the Ministry of Defence found out that they were doing this, they invited him immediately round to the MOD and they offered him. Um, brand new footage of strikes that just carried out in Iraq and they offered him an exclusive just for the BBC if they didn't run with our story. Records of those patients are not available to me except for about eight of them with whom I still communicate. They were simply dispersed all over the country and you cannot find their telephone numbers, their address or their place of living. Ο Ντουράκοβιτς και άλλοι ερευνητές προσπάθησαν να διασταυρώσουν τις έρευνές τους με στοιχεία από το Ιράκ. Αλλά αυτός που μετέφερε τις εξετάσεις των Ιρακινών ασθενών δεν έφτασε ποτέ στις Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες. And the person who was taking the samples out of the country to be shipped from Jordan to England, that person was mysteriously killed. And uh, we have no details what transpired, but we, he was killed not in Iraq, but in Jordan, after crossing the Jordanian border. Obviously, somebody who was very interested is that those samples never reach Canada or the United States. If there's no data, there's no problem. If there's no information and no one keeps track of what happened, it doesn't exist. I was fired from the Veterans Administration in the April of 1997. With, uh, with no excuse, the, the excuse, you said. The excuse was uh, uh, some bureaucratic excuse that they uh, needed to reduce the number of nuclear medicine procedures in the hospital, which is nonsense. My clinic was busier than a uh, uh, clinic four times bigger than mine, and I was the only doctor in that clinic. I did not have anybody second in charge. Now, doctors who dare to speak about Gulf War syndrome and depleted uranium. In the Veterans Administration, every single doctor lost their job, whoever touched that issue. Uh, I can quote to you doctors from Pennsylvania, from California, from Carolina, different parts of the country. Everybody who touched the issue of depleted uranium is out of job and they cannot find job anywhere in the United States because they are simply rejected. <laughs> Οι ιατρικέ εξετάσει εξαφανίζονται, οι Ινστιτούτα κλείνουν, οι γιατροί απολύονται, άλλοι άνθρωποι που μεταφέρουν ιατρικέ εξετάσει σκοτώνονται. Όλα μοιάζουν με αμερικανική κινηματογραφική ταινία. Είναι όμω η πραγματικότητα. Γιατί το Πεντάγωνο και το πανίσχυρο στρατιωτικό βιομηχανικό σύμπλεγμα έχουν πολλού λόγου να αποκρύψουν πόσο επικίνδυνα είναι τα όπλα, τα ραδιενεργά όπλα που χρησιμοποιούν. During Operation Desert Storm, tanks and attack aircraft fired depleted uranium kinetic energy penetrators which easily destroyed Iraqi armor. Για την αμερικανική πολεμική βιομηχανία, η καταγίδα της Ερίβου ήταν μια θαυμάσια ευκαιρία για να διαφημίσει τα νέα όπλα με εξασθενημένο ουράνιο. Other nations recognized the value of depleted uranium and are developing or already have depleted uranium munitions. Για σειρά από χώρες, έσπευσαν να τα αγοράσουν. You are talking about dollar culture which is present religion uh, in this part of the world. Dollar is above any sacred thing uh, of the world. It's Kodosh Kodoshim, holy of holiest. It's sanctum sanctorum. It is the holiest thing that exists in the, uh, in the business crazy culture. So if you challenge depleted uranium, You challenge multi-billion dollar industry. Ένα άλλο υλικό, το tungsten, είναι το ίδιο αποτελεσματικό στις μάχες όσο και το εξασθενημένο ουράνιο. Now tungsten may have the same effect, but tungsten is more expensive to procure, and some of the largest tungsten deposits are found in countries that the United States government feels may be less than stable as long-term sources, such as South Africa and China. We have large, large, cheap, almost free stockpiles of depleted uranium. 
you make the decision. Use the free stuff that's in plentiful right here in your backyard or go find the other stuff that may or may not be around and that could be expensive. If they acknowledge or backtrack at all and stop using these weapons um, because of the problems, they would then be um, admitting liability um, because a weapon of mass or indiscriminate destruction according to uh, the United Nations is legal. Therefore, they would then be uh, liable to lawsuits from not only um, veterans um, from their own respective countries. In June 1995, the United States Army wrote, quote, when depleted uranium is indicted as a causative agent for desert storm illnesses, the Army must have sufficient data to separate fiction from reality. Listen very carefully. Without forethought, the financial implications of long-term disability payments and health care costs would be excessive. Well, they don't want, they don't want to accept responsibility for, for something that they have caused because they have caused our illness and they don't want to accept responsibility. They're, they're very frightened about having to, to give us proper medical care and to turn on to the public and, and say, this is what we've done. Of course, it would affect the troops, it would affect morale, it would affect a tremendous uh, amount um, of, tr of British troops. They would be liable for um, claims, uh, legitimate claims from the people um, of Iraq and Kuwait as well. With the use of depleted uranium is that um, the United States and the United Kingdom the so use of uranium uh, during the Gulf War is the, is the created genocide of a nation's children and their children to come. Please tell them please that uh, the United States government now wants to turn this great destructive power into something for the benefit of mankind. And that these experiments here at Bikini are the first step in that direction. Ο πρώην Αμερικανός Υπουργός Δικαιοσύνης Ramsey Clark ηγείται της εκστρατείας για τη διεθνή απαγόρευση της χρήσης του εξεστανημένου ουρανίου. Έχει δει τα αποτελέσματά του στο Ιράκ. I was in... Iraq during the bombing, I spent about 10 days there, and we drove about 2,000 miles, and we weren't aware that depleted uranium was being used. I went back to Basra the next year in the south, where most of the depleted uranium was used, and the doctors were saying, we're seeing strange phenomena here. They had no medicine, they had nothing, but they were seeing these things that I've described, children with tumors, uh, brain tumors, uh, leukemia, other cancers. In, in numbers and forms, particularly Bedouins coming in from their mothers and fathers would bring them in, they were dying, they didn't know what was wrong with them. The United States um, admits to using um, 400 tons of depleted uranium during the Gulf War. Um, this has now entered the water table in the southern areas of Iraq. Um, it's not just the people that are suffering but also the farm animals have been born deformed too. Um, so it's in, in the southern area of Iraq is the uh, agricultural area. So uh, most people in Iraq live in the cities. So it's now in the food chain uh, with the food that's been sent back to the cities. And of course, there's the ongoing air campaign um, in Iraq today as we speak. Um, and uh, I went to the children's hospitals in Iraq. Uh, the, the, there was just terrible, terrible scenes, some terrible cancers, leukemias. Iraq is beyond hell. We are talking about civilians. We are talking about hundreds of thousands of civilians. We are talking about one million of affected children. We are talking about hundreds of thousands of children who are dying of malignant disease, immunodeficiency, and strange illnesses. If you look, these blue arrows indicate the movement of the invading American and coalition forces during the Gulf War. The pink shaded areas represent the areas of high contamination of the depleted uranium munitions. One, two, 
three major depleted uranium contamination areas. Some troops encamped for months. That's not minutes, that's months through several areas contaminated. Λεωφόρος του θανάτου ονομάστηκε ο αυτοκινητόδρομος που πήραν τα Ιρακινά στρατεύματα υποχωρώντας από το Κουβέιτ. Χιλιάδες Ιρακινοί στρατιώτες πέθαναν εκεί. And then when we drove out, we drove down this long highway of death that was very heavily contaminated with depleted uranium. So the unit I served with went through one, two, three major areas of depleted uranium contamination as well as several major tank engagements with depleted uranium contamination. And somehow the Pentagon thinks that that's only minutes. We believe it's months. They might have passed through there, they might have gone up on the highway of death and spent a day or two and been exposed at that time, but there are people that have been living there ever since and they've been drinking the water, and they've been eating the food, and they've been breathing the air, and they're the ones that are really catching it. General, just going back to the depleted uh, uranium, some of your predecessors have sworn up and down to my news organization in any case um, that this is not something that's being used. It is in the arsenal weapons with depleted uranium. You say it hasn't been used in the last few weeks. Are you now confirming that it actually has been used, and can you tell us how widely and when? It was used in the past, but uh, once again, it was used um, only in, in rare cases and only against targets which we uh, had thought uh, it would uh, have the most effect. Μετά από αρκετές παλινοδίες, το ΝΑΤΟ το παραδέχτηκε. Όπλα από εξασθενημένο ουράνιο χρησιμοποιούνται και στη Γιουκοσλαβία. As a sign, we should know that the United States used more than 300 tons of radioactive toxic waste in the Gulf War. We're set to use an even larger amount in the Balkans. We believe that the introduction of depleted uranium dust, which is uh, very small particles, uh, insoluble, half-life of 4.5 billion years, may enter the food chain in the crops, in the livestock, and in the densely populated areas of Serbia, Kosovo, Albania, Macedonia, Montenegro, and the military bases in Italy. Is there any plans for cleaning up? There have been some depleted uranium munitions used, I believe, in okay. Serbia. Yes, sir. Are there any plans for cleaning up afterwards because of the dangers of cancers which appear to be there in Iraq when the Allies used them in 91? Well, you find, you find depleted uranium in, uh, in all natural things which are in rocks, soil, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, uh, I don't overemphasize what you, what, you, what you just said. Uh, on the plans, uh, like all the other plans, uh, we do have plans, of course, to help um, those people to go back again uh, safely in their homes, but I uh, will not elaborate on the plans uh, in detail. Okay, there have also, by the way, been extensive studies into this, one very thorough one by the RAND Corporation in California, which showed that it does not have environmental aspects or health hazards. Most people in Kosovo are still living in Kosovo. I mean, <coughs> far less than uh, <coughs> half have, have fled. We hope many will be able to come back. But you're coming back to a different place. You're coming back to a place that will have some contamination. We don't know the degree. It'll have widespread destruction, <coughs> and it'll have more <coughs> pollutants than we're aware of. Some of the heavier dust containing that uranium will settle on, on the surface of the ground and by the under water currents, which are called aquifers, they can be taken to the distance far away from the site of the impact. But in my assessment, it is not dangerous because dilution is such that it will not be any higher than natural uranium. So I think contamination of the environment far away from the site of the impact would, would be negligible from the viewpoint of the human risks. We know radiation doesn't recognize borders. Any countries um, that, that are around the area is susceptible to have uranium contamination um, airborne. Also, there's the, if it gets into the water table, goes into the River Danube, and, and then this flows through the heart of Europe. It's like, it's like a plague in itself. It's like the flu. What I've seen in, in Iraq, Baghdad 
and the seeing the children there is all I can say is that they're going to um, create a genocide against um, European children now. Μέσω του Ιντερνετ, ο Σον Ράσλινγκ έχει μόλι μάθει ένα δυσάρεστο νέο. Ακόμα ένα βετεράνο πέθανε. Κατά μέσον όρο, ένα βετεράνο πεθαίνει κάθε εβδομάδα. Again, it was suicide. He'd taken, the, he'd taken an overdose with the tablets um, that he'd been prescribed for his post-traumatic stress and his depression. How many people are together affected in Britain? We know for a fact there's over the 6,000 that are ill. Definitely 6,000 that are ill. The war pensions admit that 3,000 have applied for war pensions. Um, now we we also 30, 30 of us have tested positive. Uh, top of the story. Ένα επίγον τηλεφώνημα διέκοψε τη συνέντευξή μας με τον καθηγητή Τουράκοβιτς. Ένας ασθενής του, βετεράνος από τον Καναδά, είχε μόλις πεθάνει. Yes, he died. Are we getting the samples? I'm here with the Greek television from Athens, and they would probably want to know this story. It is just at the right time. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry about the patient who died. I'm sorry about the family. It just breaks my heart. But I'm saying that it is good uh, in all bad part of it. It is good that it happens just in the time of my interview, because Greek crew will probably broadcast it immediately. Yes, I would like to speak with the doctor, because I'd like to give him advice what samples to take, how much to take, and uh, where to send them. Because we must get uh, to the bottom of that Canadian veteran story. Ο καθηγητής μας επέτρεψε να μαγνητοφωνήσουμε τη συνομιλία με τον γιατρό του ασθενούς. Dr. Jolimor, I will provide you with all information regarding our project and my credentials uh, today. You will receive it probably in the beginning of the next week and you'll get uh, some insight what uh, you are engaged in right now. I think uh, it is going to be tremendous help for all of us. Well, are you just about to start your autopsy? I think I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. <laughs> Very good. I do appreciate your call and uh, I value our collaboration. Okay. Th thank you, Dr. John. Bye. We believe, based on Pentagon documents that we've been able to secure, and I'll show you the maps in a minute, that as many as 400,000 U.S. troops may have entered areas heavily contaminated with radioactive toxic waste. So we may win the battle on the battlefield, but we may lose the war with our families, our health, and for generations yet unborn. That's the true tragedy. Um, I wasn't there to fight the enemy. Yeah. I was there to, to treat yeah. casualties, friend uh, or enemy. Um, but at the end of the day, I went out there to treat casualties. I've come home as a casualty, but a casualty of my own government. I was very proud to serve um, uh, with the Royal Army Medical Corps. My father, served with the medical corps in Korea, my grandfather, during the First World War as a medic. I was very proud to serve as a medic uh, um, for this democracy. Uh, but I've learned since uh, that we don't live in a democracy. Many veterans were improperly discharged by our military in 1991, in 1992, in 1992-1993. They weren't given medical exams. They were just simply kicked out on the basis that they were sick. It is sad to note that homelessness among Gulf War veterans is unacceptably high. In America, 40% of the homeless men on the streets are veterans. But 40% of the American population are not veterans. The veterans losing their jobs a veteran's losing medical insurance because in the United States there's no government health insurance. You get it mainly through your employer. So if they lose their health insurance, they can't get medical care. And then they go to the Department of Veterans Affairs and they say they're sick from the Gulf War. And the Department of Veterans Affairs says, well, you're not sick and you weren't exposed to anything. Claim denied. The veteran's on the street. 
That's not the way to run a country. It is unconscionable, it is outrageous to have somebody willing to sacrifice their life to come back and receive that kind of treatment. Τα αεροσκάφη Α-10, τα ελικόπτερα Apache και τα άλλα αμερικανικά όπλα που χρησιμοποιούν βλήματα από ξεστανημένο ουράνιο έχουν ήδη μολύνει το έδαφος της Ιωκοσλαβίας, ιδιαίτερα στο Κοσυφοπέδιο, αφού εκεί κυνηγούν τα σερβικά άρματα. Αναξέρωτα λοιπόν από την τελική έκβαση της υπόθεσης, αν τελικά οι Αλβανοί θα τα βρούμε τους Σέρβους και θα μπορέσουν να γυρίσουν πίσω στα εδάφη τους, δεν θα έχουν εδάφη για να καλλιεργήσουν και να ζήσουν. Όλο το έδαφος είναι μολυσμένο, όχι μόνο της Ιωγκοσλαβίας, αλλά και των γειτονικών χωρών. Ο πόλεμος κάποτε τελειώνει, αλλά το ουράνιο έχει ζωή 4,5 δισεκατομμύρια χρόνια. Γεια σας.